West Point, the Black Knights of Army. And from Annapolis, the U.S. Naval Academy midshipmen. We kind of throw the records out the window when these two get together. It's a one-score game. You get in these things, and it's going to be whoever has the ball last will have a chance to win. Kenny Niamatololo made some big-time changes, and they're paying off, so I'm on Navy. Malcolm Perry's have a fabulous year. The one thing that gives Army a puncher's chance is that they can score quickly. There's some explosivity to their offense. It's Russ, wrong to say Army's though, not going bowling. This is their bowl. It is America's game. It is a very fun game. The 120th meeting between these two institutions, one of the greatest rivalries in college football. You can throw out the record books, Brady. Normally with this game, things have changed, though, for both sides. So last year, Army was 11-2 and two on the season. This year, they're 5-7. and seven. Navy, on the other hand, 3-10 and 10 last year. And this year, they're doing great, 9-2. and two. They're bowl eligible. They're heading to the Liberty Bowl. So what changed for these two teams? Uh, the hard thing is to figure out really what's been the biggest difference. That I think really for if you look at Army, it's it's been their offense. It hasn't been quite as productive as what I think we we're accustomed to seeing last year. And their defense has been good, but not lights out. Last year it was absolutely phenomenal. I think Jeff Monk and, and that team has maybe just taken a little bit of a step back. And for Navy, to me, it, it's been just that. It's been the combination of their defense as well as their offensive production. It's almost been you know two you know uh, the teams have kind of flipped places from where they were a year ago. And what we've had out of each one of these groups. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Uh, just the, the game in general is really exciting. Though, so yeah, hopefully, sure. I mean Navy. It's and, good football. It I is. Mean, good it's, it's, it's triple option football. football. It's triple option football. Even though they don't really run true triple options much anymore, but both of them it, they have to be assignment sound. I mean, each of these teams really requires the opposite team to be able to be very assignment sound with what they're doing. Each one of their quarterbacks, who's the leader of their team, leads them in rushing. They're really the key and they're the spoke that makes it all work. For each one of these offenses so whether you're talking about Kelvin Hopkins or Malcolm Perry both of them lead the way I think the difference is you know Malcolm Perry by far and away is going to lead the way if you look at Kelvin Hopkins he mixes in with Jabari Laws uh, as well as a couple of the quarterbacks who will mix in from time to time at that spot but for the most part I mean this is going to be a battle in the trenches whoever's going to be the, the team that can run the football effectively the most puts the other at a disadvantage because they're both so weak throwing the football through the air and clearly, as you can see, Malcolm Perry has had a phenomenal year so far. Now, now, Kelvin Hopkins, he had to leave the game against Hawaii. Do we expect him to play in this game, or are they going to have to pick one of their other quarterbacks? He left with a leg, leg injury. It sounds like he's going to be fine to be able to come back. But again, even if you look after the course of the year, they still mix in their quarterbacks to play. So he will get the starter. It looks like he's probable to start. Uh, but you're going to see a number of quarterbacks mix in and throughout. And again, that makes it hard to defend. Not only, again, as you're talking about plays that revolve, revolve around the dive key, the quarterback, the pitch man, at times you also got different guys running that operation so it becomes incredibly difficult to stop however all that being said again it's a lot of smoke and mirrors at times there's design quarterback <laughs> runs in there the design runs for the actual tailback uh, and so it's not quite as much triple options what we used to see in the end but a bunch of different guys touching the football, and that clock's going to be churning. This will be a fast football game. You know, it is old school football. Is that fun for you to watch? Is it? Of is this game fun? Just you know, I mean, it's it's, it, a it's fun because the mystery is always who are they not going to block? When you run op the option attack, you're essentially saying, especially when it's the triple option, we're not going to block two guys on defense, or we're going to read that guy, and that's why you see them stick the football out. They're reading one of the defensive linemen. If he takes away the dive, quarterback keeps it. He goes to his next option. If that pitch man is then taken away, he keeps it. If the guy comes and tries to attack him, he pitches it out there. So true triple option. It's always fascinating to see who the guys are that they're not blocking because they mix it up. And that's, the, that's really the struggle for a lot of defenses is figuring that out. And then off of that, again, they've got some design runs where that dive man all of a sudden doesn't become a read. He becomes a lead blocker. And now you get the quarterback out on an edge. It's a design run or potentially he has a pitch option. So... There's so many different things you can run within this offense. I think the difference for me in what I see in, in these two offenses is if it's Navy, they run a little bit more midline, meaning they're going to run more in between the tackles at times with Malcolm Perry combined with some option elements to the outside. If it's Army, look for them. If they're going to run inside, it's probably going to be with their dive man. If not, they're going to then push to the edge and then try to utilize their pitch men out in space to make plays and bigger plays upfield. And Malcolm Perry is taking this game very seriously when he left. Uh, Everyone yeah, does. Everybody, Come on. Well, especially, I mean, for this, because it's really neat, you know, this senior class, they've lost to an Army. Yeah. 
three years in a row now. And when he walked off the field last year, normally they don't really talk to their players. And he walked up to his coach. He said, I'm your guy next year because he's gone back and forth between quarterback and slot back. So he said, this is it. I'm taking the senior class to their first win over Army. So we've talked a lot about the offense. Let's go to the defense here. What are the two tactics for the team? Well, the biggest thing is you got to deal with cut blocks, all right? If people don't know what a cut block is, it's when the offensive Educators. linemen are going to shoot out and really try to take your legs out from underneath you. So for starters, for the defensive front, it comes down to being able to keep their feet and try to make plays into the backfield. But they've got to take away the dive man. They've got to take away whoever that is that's going to end up being playing essentially their fullback for them in the scheme. If you take that away, then you can allow those linebackers to roam free out on the edges and focus more on the quarterbacks since those are the, the leading rushers. But Cole Christensen, the middle linebacker for Army, uh, Diego Fago, he's the middle linebacker for Navy. Both these two young men, they lead their team in tackles. They have been phenomenal this year. There is going to be a lot of pressure on them to once again have big games and stymie each of these rushing attacks. I know you like my beautiful puns. Can I say you can forget about it? That's pretty good, right? Sure. Yeah. I stole it from somebody. Um, okay, so our Inside College Football crew, uh, they are going to take a look at this game, which of course plays every year in Philadelphia. Army Navy, America's game, presented by USAA on CBS this weekend. Kickoff at 3. Our coverage on CBS at 2.30 Eastern. Coverage on CBS Sports Network beginning with the live march on at noon Eastern. Brian Jones and Rick Neuheisel here. Is it as simple as the team that gets the most rushing yards wins or not? Well, I think it's that and turnover margin. You look at Army last year, plus 10 in that department. This year, plus 1. They've had a lot of turnover at the quarterback position. Defensively, lose your, your defensive coordinator. But they haven't fallen off that much, whereas Navy on the defensive side of the ball, Newberry and Norwood, the two Bryans come over mm. uh, to take over that part uh, of, of the team, and they've done wonders. These two coaches know each other as well as any two coaches in the country know each other because they're both Paul Johnson disciples, right? Right. They both came from that uh, triple option stuff, so they'll know all the little nuances yeah. that are going on over the course of the game. Staying up with what the attack is on the other side, will be critical to the outcome. But if you're thinking that this is a foregone conclusion about Navy, let me just remind you how Army played against Michigan yeah. not so very long ago. That's right. They took them right to the brink, had a chance to kick a field goal to win the game. This is going to go down to the wire. Go down to the wire. We're going to be live on the sideline before the game. Stay and, dry. Uh, yeah, weather doesn't look so good. So if, mm. if you just don't even want to watch football but see how we do just getting rained on, join us on CBS <laughs> and uh, have a great week. He's sloppy. All right, so let's bring in our college football writer, Dennis Dodd. Dennis, I have to say, first of all, I'm sad you're not here anymore. You're not in South Florida with us, Dennis. He had to go home, apparently. I'm back back home in the cold. you got to live somewhere. I know. Okay, so you are going to talk about three players to know in this game. We touched on this guy briefly, and your first guy is Navy quarterback Malcolm Perry, one of the best quarterbacks in Navy history. Tell us a little bit more about him. Yeah, 5'9", 185. I tell you, a lot of people at Navy are upset that Perry didn't get more mention for the Heisman Trophy, at least among the finalists. And I'm sure, and I'm, I'm not sure I don't disagree. 1,500 yards rushing, top five in the country, not just quarterbacks, of everybody rushing the ball. Amanda, the last time of any quarterback of any substance finished in the top five in rushing was Denard Robinson of Michigan back in 2010. So this guy's legit. Very fast, very elusive. Um, he, strung, he strung together three straight thousand yard seasons and is really the engine that makes Navy go. Now they run the ball very, very well. Third in the country, 60 runs per game. That leads everybody in the country. Malcolm Perry is going to get a workout against Army. So let's stay with the midshipmen. Uh, let's talk about fullback Jamal Carruthers. Would you say he's the second biggest weapon for Navy? Yeah, that's right, uh, Jamal Carruthers. How many fullbacks, Amanda, do you see that run a 4.5440? Uh, Coach Ken Nui Matalolo called him the fastest fullback he's seen, and that encompasses 22 years that he's been around Navy football. So that means something. They have this thing called the fullback trap at Navy, and Army for that matter, where the, the quarterback sticks the ball in the belly of the fullback. He either leaves it there for a dive into the line, um, Brady mentioned that, or he takes it out and runs the option, and the fullback has to be the dummy. Well, that's what this guy is. Jamal Carruthers is one of the best fullbacks, not only in, at Navy, but in the country, in this game. 
Uh, he showed up big on a thing called Catapult. It's these biometric vests that they wear. And that he was fifth string in August. And he's, excuse me, run himself to the top of the depth chart. And that's why Ken Nui Matalolo thought he was one of the fastest players, fastest fullbacks he's ever seen. He will be the number two weapon. All right, so let's go over to Army. Navy is favored by 10 and a half, but if they want to be successful, they got to find a way to deal with your third player to watch. That is the Black Knights, Cole Christensen. Why is he so dangerous? Two-time Army captain, that means something in this game and at Army where it's all about being a leader. 77 tackles to lead all independent or an all-independent team last year. This year, 103 tackles. Uh, he is the leader of that defense. In his career against Navy, 15 career tackles and one and, one and a half sacks. He's never lost the Navy. We know that. Um, you know, here's here's something about Cole Christensen nobody knows. His uh, his house was taken over by let's see the Discovery Channel as a child because a possessed um, brother, not brother, a possessed child had been in his house and they made a whole show about it. This game doesn't freak him out. That freaked him out. So Cole Christensen is not afraid of much. Well, that was interesting. Dennis, thank you so <laughs> much. We're just going to leave it Off topic. on that a little bit. But we like it. That's why we like talking to you. Uh, Dennis Dodd, thank you so much. Thank you. Can you follow that, Brie? No, I'm, I'm freaked out now. That, that, that whole story freaked me out. I'm not sure what's going on there. Yeah. Well, there you go. You know. It's going to be Friday the 13th this Friday. We're just going to go with that. Okay, let's go to the coaching comparison here. Uh, both of these guys are so well-respected. They've won awards in the past. Uh, talk to us about these two coaches. Yeah, look, I think when you look at the track record of Ken Nia Matalolo, he took over for a legend there at Navy. And this is, what, almost a dozen years ago. He's over, in his 12th season now for Navy. But he has continued to you carry the torch for them, uh, running this system, allowing them to be a top 25 team, just being an overall sound football team. The only thing you're kind of missing the past few years has been beating Army. Look, and Jeff Mockin's <laughs> been phenomenal. I mean, since he's come over from Georgia Southern, uh, where he had a 38 and, and 16 record, he's also been able to take Army to back to back 10 win seasons over the past two years. Now, this, this season hasn't got off to quite as good of a start, but he's had a lot of success versus Navy. He understands what this game means uh, to, to the Golden Knights. And I, I do believe in this matchup, you said it the best. You can throw out the records, it's a rivalry. Everything kind of comes down to their execution of the game plan in this matchup. And it'll be interesting to see who has the edge. Obviously, uh, the Navy's got the bowl game coming up afterwards with Kansas State. Um, that'll be another tough test for them. However, this is clearly the focus. And I'm sure they'd want to build momentum, not only getting a win versus Army, something they haven't done in a few years, but then taking that into play a pretty solid Kansas State team in their bowl game. Well, on the Army side, Jeff Munkin, who won the George Munger Coach of the Year award last year, so that's really special to him. They had such an incredible season last season. So, I mean, a win, I mean, because the season has been just kind of a dud for them. I mean, I would assume, especially they don't have a bowl game, they're going to put everything on the field for this game. Yeah, I wouldn't call it a dud. I just feel like, you know, you go back to a couple of their games, I mean, they kept things close with Michigan. I mean, obviously a team that's way more talented than they are, they had to go there on the road, and they hung around a lot longer than people thought in that matchup. And so I think they've had their moments, too, and they realize they can play with the big boys. But to me, there's a number of things. Injuries have played a factor into it all. And also, you've got you know, kind of a different group that's mixing it out. I think it's taken them a while to figure out who their best group is offensively. As much as you talk about that a lot of times in the passing game with some of these spread attacks, it's very similar when you look at an option attack. You're still trying to figure out what's the right mix of players and how can you best utilize those guys in those spots, whether it's going to be playing at the fullback, the wingbacks, whatever the case may be in that flex bone and figure out what's best for them. I think it's taken them a little bit of a while this year. And as I said before, their defense just hasn't been quite as lights out as we saw a year ago. It is a fun game. It is a great condition. Condition. The conditions, by the way, at this game. Don't shake More your head at gray Brady. conditions, not gray They're conditions. They're going to be gray, gray conditions, conditions for this game in Philadelphia. The 120th meeting between Army and Navy. You got the Black Knights and the Midshipmen. Navy favored by 10 and a half. They have not won in three straight years. So let's see what Tim thinks. Tim, I have to tell you, we're going to bring in Tim Doyle here. Your picks last weekend. Just so-so. You just did so-so. You know, I lose, and then it's bad enough you lose, but then Brady Quinn texts you, just simple text. He goes, you're a loser. And, you know, it's not like I said. It's just, but, uh, I didn't even send him the thumbs up emoji back. I just sent him the thumbs up 
to his text because I didn't want to deal with him. You know why that happens is because Tim's the type of guy that he likes to tell you about all his wins. Exactly. Well, I was going to say so every I, I time text, he wins, we know. I don't text him often, but I make sure to let him know so he recognizes that there are some losers out there too. And last weekend was not a good weekend for Mr. Tim Dillon. Oh, he's got his uh, he's got his shades on. You can deal with the shade. Uh, okay, so let's focus on this game here, Tim. Let's see if he can get back on track and you know text Brady something else uh what do you like in this game I, I like navy in this game i mean it's been quite the swing right navy wins 14 straight army wins three straight uh right now i think navy is actually the more healthier team uh, that's the insight that i've gotten to the sources that i've talked to that they're healthy and obviously malcolm perry's had a sensational year he's the best player on that team but when you think about the guys at navy they've never experienced that win like, they've never beaten Army. Like, sure, they got Kansas State, and they got the bowl game and all that. They're going to show too much. It's like they don't care anything at all about the bowl game. They care about winning this game. Like, there's so many rivalries, and this should really be mentioned. I think sometimes it's forgotten because this is the ultimate rivalry. And it's a game that has a special place in college football. It's played at a special time. So, for Navy, if they could win this game, you know, and really put a stamp on their senior year as well as the type of season that they've had, 9-2 and two on the season, I think they're going to run up the score. I mean, Army, they couldn't stop Hawaii if they had three extra men on the field. I feel like Hawaii is still scoring in that game. So this is a game that obviously Navy's rushing attack tops in all of college football. I don't love laying a lot of points in traditionally a low-scoring game, but I am confident Navy is going to win. And if they can pile it on top of Army, they're going to. Yeah, bottom line is Malcolm Perry is the best football player on the field for both teams. And I think if you look at the trend of both these teams coming into it, uh, Navy, for example, has struggled defensively. I mean, both of them, if you look at the, the entire uh, scope of work over the course of the season, each of them kind of gives about 22, 24 points per game. However, Navy the last three games, you look at the Notre Dame game, for example, SMU Houston giving up 40 points on average in those matchups. Army, as, as Tim alluded to, 52 points to Hawaii in the last matchup. So I do think this will be a higher scoring game, uh, even though both defenses are very familiar with each one of these offenses. There's always little wrinkles. There's always adjustments back and forth. And at the end of the day, I think it hits the over. Uh, weather will potentially play a factor, but not so much because, again, these are rushing attacks. So more for the ball security, uh, quarterback center exchange, the pitch, the catch, those sorts of things, but not necessarily in the passing game quite as much. I like the over. Ten and a half points, though, it's a lot of points at a rivalry that's usually been pretty close. So I think Navy wins it, but I think Army keeps it close, stays within that, that ten and a half range. I don't know who's going to get the loser text uh, of this game. And I was going to ask you real quick, Tim, so we were talking about the weather here. Uh, 55 degrees and heavy rain predicted for this game. Does that change anything in your brain? You know, I, I, I really feel like that, that very valid question. You know, some people, when they see rain, they automatically think under. I, I know some sharp guys, they think over because they think more turnovers. Uh, I think that's something that Brady could probably speak to because he's been under center and he's played in that type of environment. But turnovers tend to create more points because you got shorter fields and there tends to be more scoring. So I, I'm not really sure there's a sharp philosophy unless it's like complete downpour, like uh, the 49ers played the Redskins early in the year. Like if you knew that weather report, I feel like that made a major difference in that NFL game. But I'm not really sure how it's going to affect this game. I do think that it takes huge, you know what, to take the over. And I agree with Brady. Last five years, these kids, this game hasn't even sniffed that number. Such low-scoring games. But uh, traditionally, these military schools do know their types of play. But I tend to like the over as well. I think they can win two different ways. I think Navy's offense is dynamic enough. And I think the defense is, well, let's just say our subpar so this year, so I like over here. Hey, Brady, the trend eventually has to turn around, and I apologize to you, and I want to do this on national airwaves. You know, I asked you for your zip code, and I feel like you were hesitant to tell me it. Maybe I wanted to send the Brady Quinn family a Christmas card. So now, since the hesitation, I'm going to tell you right now, no Christmas card, you're out. Well, it's one thing to ask for your mailing address. It's another thing to purely only ask for a zip, a zip code. code. So that, that was how the weird you, part about it, it all. It? Really, you just want to look at an entire zip code yeah. to find out where I live. Uh, you weirdo. Tim, very quickly, before we let you go, we have a very personal question. What are you going to do with just one college football game on TV? 
you know, this is where you just lock in. And I'm not a Netflix and chill guy because I'm married. I'm, I'm no fun. But I'm a huge, like, Daniel Tiger marathon. And there's a huge Daniel Tiger marathon on. Amanda, I know you have no idea who Daniel Tiger is. But Brady and I have watched way too much Daniel Tiger. And when Daniel gets the shot, one tear just runs down my eye. I feel bad for him. I mean, it was his first time he ever got a shot. I'm go oh, this is a kid's thing. Yes. Okay. Yeah, no, I didn't get that. Uh, but thank you. Thank you, Tim. Uh, we're going to text you on Saturday. Make sure you're doing okay there with Daniel the Tiger uh, while you're watching the Army-Navy game. It's going to be Saturday, 3 Eastern on CBS. It's an awesome game. Please tune in.